All right, we are um, now going to turn our attention to um, a special guest who is joining on the line who is uh, enduring a particularly tough uh, morning. Uh, June Scobie Rogers, the widow of the commander of the Space Shuttle Challenger, Dick Scobie, joining us on the line now from her home in Chattanooga, Tennessee. And, and June, I just, uh, it's got to be a terribly difficult thing to see this, particularly for someone who has been through what you've been through. Just uh, tell us what, what you thought and, and what it's brought back for you. Thank you, Miles. It's a tragic day for our nation, for the NASA family, and especially for the dear families of the Columbia crew. Um, our heartfelt uh, prayers are for them. I know that they're flying back to Johnson Space Center now and um, had calls wanting to talk to the commander's wife, and we're going to talk eventually. But uh, it's, um, it's something so difficult because a private loss is so public and is shared with the nation. Tell, tell me, um, w without violating the privacy of your conversation, what can be said to between June Scobie Rogers and Evelyn Husband today. What can you tell her uh, to ease her pain in any way? Well, we, we could talk about the day, just getting through the day with your loved ones and friends and prayers and to know that they're in the hands of God, that their loved ones have surely slipped, slipped those surly bonds of earth. And God's put out his hand and holds them. And I would want God to hold them close. There's, there's so much to be concerned about with their families, and um, I would hope that they're taking care of themselves and that the NASA doctors are taking good care of them. Um, to feel the prayers that the nation, when they say they're sending prayers, they are and to feel the love of all of those people and to know that we care so much for them and know their loss. It's, um, it's, a, it's, it's so difficult and it's such a tragedy and it's so unfair that it happened, but the world, the world knows how they died and if they can just remember and hold on to the dream what they were living for and what their mission was all about, then that dream will see them through. Um, boy, that's, those are tough words. And I, I know you've told me many times that in the wake of, of Challenger, 17 years ago this past week, you uh, really not even long after the incident, we're talking to then Vice President Bush and uh, you uh, expressed at that time your firm belief that your husband, uh, Dick Scobie, would have wanted to see NASA press on. Do you, fe you feel, I, I, I know you don't know Rick's husband necessarily, but do you feel that that is the spirit of this crew? What, what dear people, yes. I, 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 I can, anyone who believes so much in the space mission of, of the discovery of opening new vistas and to learning about the space frontier. You know, they're living, they're living for that um, discovery of space exploration. And they, so many of them signed up to NASA to fly in space with vision and hope and knowing that it would bring so much more information to our planet to help us. With those dreams, and uh, fulfilling those dreams, they, I can't speak for the current Columbia crew, but if they signed up to fly with NASA, that must have been their dream that they would want fulfilled as well. June Scobie Rogers, our, our best to you on this day, which uh, must be particularly poignant and painful for you as well, and we appreciate you taking a few moments with us. God bless you all. God bless you. As she spoke, we were watching um, yet again that shot. Um, you can see it right there on your screen. Uh, somewhere um, south of Dallas, Texas, uh, the Space Shuttle Columbia, about 9 a.m. Eastern Time, 
was streaking across Mach 18, 200,000 feet, and just went from a single fireball to multiple fireballs in an instant. Uh, communication abruptly ended in the middle of a conversation from the commander, Rick Husband, and um, immediately prior to that, there's some indication of some problems with tire pressure. What that means, we don't know. It may be quite some time before we ever have any sense of what really happened and what caused the Space Shuttle Columbia to break up. But we've already seen the, the first steps toward uh, that conclusion. First thing that flight controllers uh, did in Houston was tell their people on those various consoles to put together their notes, capture their data, put notes in boxes, seal it up, get it ready for the investigation. Not long thereafter, we saw Sean O'Keefe, the NASA administrator, saying that the wheels were in motion already for an independent commission to get to the bottom of this particular incident, an independent commission that will ultimately report back to the nation and give NASA and the rest of the nation a sense of what went wrong. And then Bill Reedy, the head of the Human Spaceflight, uh, Associate Administrator of Human Spaceflight, talking about finding it, fixing it, and moving on. Moving on might, will be a real challenge for NASA, depending on what comes out of this. Could take quite some time before we see another shuttle fly. It was almost three years from Challenger's accident until Discovery flew in the return to flight. Uh, we're now in the early stages. It's a time for mourning. It's a time for questions. The answers will come much later. Judy? Miles, I, as we keep uh, showing that picture over and over again uh, of the first sign of, uh, that something was gone wrong, had gone wrong visually, I, I keep thinking how hard it is to reconcile the beauty of the sky, the beautiful crystal blue sky over the state of Texas with that white, thin white vapor trail, how hard it is to reconcile that with the awful thing that happened. And it, again, it, it reminds me of the Challenger. It, it, you know, the picture was, itself was, it was spectacular. It was red and white and the blue background. And here again, a beautiful blue sky, and yet concealing a horrific uh, accident that's taken the lives of those seven brave people. Um, President Bush learned of this, uh, we are told, just shortly after NASA realized what had happened about 9.15 this morning Eastern Time. He was at Camp David. He made his way uh, pretty soon after that back into Washington, Camp David, of course, being in the Catoctin Mountains outside of Washington and Maryland. Now you see this is the live picture of the White House, a flag there flying over the White House at half-staff. And it was just about 45 minutes ago uh, that President Bush addressed the nation.